Hello everyone. Thank you for being here today. My name is Roy Wall and I'm from Wall to Wall Software and today I am very excited to show you our new product called Firepower. Firepower works with Rad Studio and it uses the FireMonkey platform to build applications for multiple devices. You might be familiar with our VCO products in the past which are InfoPower and also First Class. Those are also component suites to build front ends for business applications. But those are strictly for building VCL applications for Windows and not for these other devices. We have now created a new component suite, Firepower, for this. So what is Firepower? Again, it's a it's our new component suite and enables you to build front ends for applications and especially business applications. And it targets multiple devices using Delphi's FireMonkey library. Now, Firepower works with Embarcadero's RAD Studio and that method. And the devices that your applications can target are all the ones that are supported by RAD Studio. This means it's going to support for the desktop Win32, Win64, OS X32. And for the mobile devices, it's going to support the Android, the iOS simulator, and the iOS devices, like iPad and iPhones. So what are the advantages of using Firepower components? Well, the runtime advantages are exceptional performance across all platforms. Critical in our design of this component suite was that we did not want you, the developer, to have to compromise on performance when moving your applications to the mobile space. We also especially wanted the mobile experience for your end users to be intuitive and natural without compromising functionality or, again, speed. For example, the mobile applications should support touch scrolling and the scrolling should be smooth in the process, just as they normally are with mobile apps. If your apps do not behave this way, you are likely to have many complaints from your end users because they don't want desktop apps running on a mobile device. They want mobile apps running on a mobile device. So what are the advantages of using Firepower for developers? Well, for one thing, productivity. Most common tasks can be done without any coding or very little coding. And this allows you to develop your applications more rapidly. Another advantage is the component design's versatility. The components have many events to allow you to extend and change behavior of the components. But they're not just events that fire when something happens. They're events that allow you to set Boolean flags or property settings to change the, be the behavior or change the behavior under certain conditions. So we call these smart events. And finally, my personal opinion is I think Delphi is more fun with our components. But you be the judge of that. You try it out and tell me what you think. So what components are included with Firepower? Well, one of the highlights of Firepower are its grid components. And these components are very fast on the desktop as well as the mobile space. They're very flexible and they're very advanced. We'll be going over those in a little bit. There's also edit components and there's a wide variety of edit components for the most common tasks. There's date editors, lookups for a lookup table, checkboxes, switches, combos, and there's also a record view which is a combination of all of those. And then there are search components. If you want to be able to find your data, you want to be able to do filtering, you want to be able to do lookups, and you don't want to write all the code for your end users to be able to do those things. We have components all set to go for you to, to drop in and, and plug into your applications. And finally, there are validation, uh, not components, but there's a validation language that is integrated into all the components. So for instance, your edit controls and your grid controls and your record views, they can all can take advantage of this validation language. And this validation language allows you to protect the integrity of your data's input. For instance, if you can establish certain rules and color schemes for your application so that if it's invalid input, they'll be notified immediately and also be uh, prevented from entering invalid data into your database. Today I want to concentrate on the two grid components that are included in Firepower. The first one is the traditional vertical data grid with columns. And you're probably familiar with that. Delphi has a vertical grid as well, and there's also one in our InfoPower VCL component suite. This grid is directly bindable to, to data sources, and the data connection is live. And they can also be attached to in-memory data sources. And also, you can link it to a prototype bind source to manipulate memory and have it linked to your own data structures. 
The other type of grid is very natural to use in the mobile space. This is the layout grid. It's a free format grid. You lay out your controls on the grid and they are repeated the number of times you want horizontally or the number of times you want vertically. And we'll be showing you that in a little bit. We'll be going through both grids and demonstrating how they operate and how they will look to your end users. And this is ideal for the mobile space where the screen real estate is at a premium. There may not be much space to put all these headers and columns and sometimes you just want to see the actual data. As long as it's laid out in a natural way, the users will know what the data represents. Okay, we're back in the IDE now. now the first thing I want to show you is our main demo, which is included with Firepower. And this shows you all our controls in action, and it shows you a lot of how-tos, how to get certain things done. We're going to go over today how to put controls in the grid, how to customize columns to use controls that you think are appropriate for your data. So let's go ahead and open up the data grid controls demo and we're going to first run this demo to show you what we want our design time to accomplish. So let me click on the grid controls demo and the first column you can see has a button in it and this button only appears under certain conditions and the condition happens to be when the buyer field is a value of checked. So you can see edit only shows up in those scenarios. And we'll show you how to accomplish that design time in a little bit. The next two columns do not have any control associated with it, just regular edit controls, which you can edit still. The fourth column is a checkbox field. The fifth column is a lookup combo, which means it looks up another table and it fills in the value from a related table. So if I was to click the drop down here, you can see it, it has a zip code information. It also supports incrementally searching, so if I start typing into the control, it will incrementally search the, the lookup table, and then it will fill in the value when you select it. So this column here is a date column. It's detected automatically, so you don't have to do anything special to accomplish that, but you may want to change the display format, and we'll show you that how to do that at design time. All right, let's close this and go back to design time now. Okay, we're back in the IDE now, and now we're going to kind of try to build that demo from scratch. Now, uh, we're not going to go totally from scratch because I want to leave the data sources here so that we're not having to spend a lot of time connecting those data sources. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to drop a brand new grid on here. I'm going to delete this grid. And then I'm going to put the grid back in, a new grid. So I'm going to drag it into here. I'm going to align it with the client so it'll look nice. And now I'm going to bind it to um, the bind source. So I'll scroll that up here. Uh, where is it? I'll connect it to the bind source. And now the grid is has the columns that the bind source has. Now let's double click on the grid so we can readjust the column order. So let's not worry about showing the customer number. So I'll delete that. Let's Get us similar to what we just had on our demo before. I believe we had a date on there. We had a first name, last name, but let's not be too concerned about those columns right now. So move those down. And I think we also had a, I'm not sure what the column we had. We had a button column. I don't know. Here's a button column. So let's move that up top. And that is, there we go. And let's change the width. We'll go and make the width a little bit smaller. And let's see how that looks right now. Buyer, contact date. I don't have a lookup combo. Let's move the zip code up here. And let's get rid of company name. So now we have the controls that we're really going to be manipulating. So the first thing we do is let's go back out of here and we'll see that now we have the columns in the order we want. Let's go make the first column a button. So by to do that, we go back in here and we click on the button column and we go to the control information. Right now the control type is a default, it doesn't know it's a button. So we're going to click on that and we're going to select button. Now it's a button. Of course we didn't give it a title or anything so now we have to give the button some attributes. To do that we go into the control attributes property and we click on the button. Now we want to have a set of captions so let's give it a caption like uh, edit and now it'll show edit. And now we may, we may not want the edit to be available for every single column. Maybe it's only going to be editable if the buyer column has a value of yes. So let's go to the events of the grid. 
So we'll click on the grid and we'll go to the events of the grid and now we're going to determine whether the button should be shown or not. And there's an event called on update column control and this will let us determine if, if the column should show the button or not. So yeah, I've already defined this event before. We're just going to attach it and show you what the code is. So in this event we have um, a data structure called update control attributes and in that data structure there is a can show boolean and if we set that to false then it will not show that custom control. So in this case I'm going to evaluate the column's field name if it's the button column which is the first column then we'll only show this button if the buyer column has a value of yes. So you can see this as update control attributes dot can show equals update control attributes dot get value of buyer asterisk equals yes. So by having that, let's see how that operates right now. So far, we've gotten the button column. We're going to run this program, and now we can see this button only shows up when the buyer column is yes. Okay, that's the first column. Now let's go ahead and continue that, and let's make the second column a checkbox. So we're going to go back into the designer. We're going to click the buyer column, and we're going to make that column a checkbox. So I'm back to cus sorry control type. Let's make it a checkbox, and now we're going to say the checkbox is true. So we have to go to the checkbox here and you define the attributes for checkbox, and when it's yes, we'll say that's um, the value. That's when it's checked. And what no is the value when it's unchecked. So now when I have that, I run the program again, and we'll look at the buyer column this time. And the buyer column now shows a check whenever the buyer value was yes. Now let's go to well the dates. Actually, those are already by default. It'll detect a date. But suppose you wanted a different format for the date. You didn't like that format. So let's go to the first contact date and we'll look at the display format property for that column. So that would be, let's close this up so we don't have too much clutter going on. Display format property. Let's say we wanted to have a different format such as month, 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 day, day, maybe only two digit years, let's say. Now I can see that it'll show it in that fashion. That's probably not a very good look. Let's make it a dash. That's still maybe more normal a little bit. So now the date format has changed based upon whatever value you put here. And that's finally, let's look at the zip code column. This one's a little more complicated because we're actually going to look up a lookup table. So in this scenario, we need to change a custom, sorry, a control type to be a lookup combo. So it's going to look up another data source. In this case, the data source it's going to look up is going to be a zip code database. So now I go through the lookup combo properties, and in there I'm going to look up the source zip code. I already had this buy-in source created ahead of time. And my lookup field is going to be a zip code. And now which columns do I want to display? Well, let's display a, a few columns. Let's display, let's play all the fields. Zip code, city, and state. And now I run this program again, and let's see what we get. Alright, so now this is a zip code column, and if I click on it, you'll see a zip code uh, lookup. You can even support incremental search. I can start typing letters, and you can see it autofills the rest. And then I hit enter, and a lot it fills it in. And you can see the first contact date is, is following the format that I typed in, and the date again can select from a calendar. Okay, that's how we set the, the control types up. Of course, right now our headers do not click, so let's see how do we make them look like buttons. Go back to the grid, and I'll go to the title attributes. Title attributes lets enable title buttons, and we want to be able to sort ascending and sort descending. So we check the options of the title attributes, and we're going to sort ascending and descending. Now let's run the program again and see what happens when we click on the buttons. And also the look will change to look like a button now instead of just like a regular header. 
So the it looks like a button now. Click on it, sort it by the zip code, click on the zip code again, and it starts descending. And okay, that's all right. Hope that gives you an idea of how to do the controls. There's a lot more to this grid. We can show you some custom painting in a second. Um, I'm not sure how much time we have, so I'm not sure I'll be going into that. Okay, now I want to show you another kind of grid, which is actually one of my favorites. This is the layout grid. The layout grid is a free format grid, which means you can lay out your controls in any fashion you want, and whatever presentation you developed will be repeated going down vertically or going down horizontally, so that it looks like a grid, but it's a lot more flexible than the traditional grid. It's also very well suited for the mobile space. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like when your program runs. So I'm going to launch our main demo and launch the layout grid vertical demo. In this demo, um, it uses the layout grid and it lays out the grid with edit controls on the left and then a graphic control on the right. And the, In this example, the trigger fishy is a single edit control. Underneath that is another edit control to display clown triggerfish. Underneath that is a memo control. And when I run the program, it's, it repeats that layout for each record in your database. So let me try scrolling through this layout grid. You can see it's a very smooth kind of scrolling, which is what your end users will expect on a mobile device. They're not going to want to have a desktop app running on a mobile device. They want a mobile app running on a mobile device. And that's what we ensure that happens with when you use our controls. So I'm able to scroll up and down vertically, and you can see it's very intuitive for the end user. Okay, we're back in the design time environment, and now we're going to show you how to build that demo that we just ran on the iPhone device. So the first thing we need to do is you need to drop a TW layout grid, and we already have it on this form because this is the demo. And inside this layout grid, we have a T layout structure so that we can put the edit controls in there and have them laid out, aligning to the top or aligning to the client. This makes it a lot easier to manipulate and make the layout uh, look nice. And on the right, we have a graphic control. And each of these controls is bound to a field in the database. So for instance, if I right-click on this memo field and go to the binding designer, you can see that the text field is bound to, let's follow it up here. Uh, oh, there it is, bound to the notes field in the bind source. So we can actually change this layout as well. So if I didn't want the trigger fishy to be on top, I could move it down below here. And now when you run the program, we're going to go ahead and run it under Windows so you can see what actually happens. So I'm going to run the program, and now we should see a different look for where Triggerfishy is. So you can see Triggerfishy has been moved down, and each record is repeated. So that's a really convenient way to manipulate your look. I'm going to show you one more usage of the layout grid. And the layout grid can be used to display records horizontally so that when you scroll the record you're scrolling to the right instead of scrolling to the bottom. Now in this example here you can see that the record the car is on top and each below that are all the edit controls and then the record is repeated to the right. And this could be useful in some cases like if you're displaying like a graphic like a car or have a memo field that has some height if you display a traditional grid you're not going to be able to have room to display that picture of the car or display multiple lines of the memo field. So in those cases, the horizontal view is much more applicable and much more useful for your end users to manipulate. So let's see again what that looks like, just to clarify, in case you guys forgot it from the previous demo. So I go to the horizontal demo, and you see the cars are going to be across the top, and you can scroll left and right. So we're at the scroll ball here. I'm scrolling to the right, scrolling to the left, and there it is. Well, I'm afraid we've run out of time, so I'm going to give you some places you can get more information on our product. In the mobile store for the Google Play Store, we have a demo, Firepower, which shows you all the components in action. So you can see what the end user would see. You can see the scrolling, you can see the smooth scrolling, you can see our grid, our layout grid, our validation. Um, pretty much most of the controls are in action in this demo. On the iOS store, we were unable to put our demo on there because Apple will not allow you to put demos on there. You can only put real apps. So we made a real app called Nutrition Diner, and we've uploaded that to the App Store. 
And this app store, sorry, this application is quite useful for Americans since it lets you see over 500 restaurants in America and it gives you the nutrition information on all the menu items for each restaurant. So go ahead and download that if you have an iPhone or an iPad and you can then start using it and find out when you're dining out, see what the nutrition information is for any menu item. And finally, um, you can try out our Firepower product. You can download it from our website and there's a link right there. And you can find more information about the components from the link at the bottom at wallwall.com. All right, now I think it's time for some questions.